Welcome back to Flora and the Novice Explorers. Today we are vlogging our damn heart out in Valencia. We've got a golden ticket. 10 stop pass. This will allow us to hopefully hop about the city quicker. We've only got one day, so we have to fit in as much as possible. So now we are hopping on a train that we have to put our arm out for. How long's the journey? 25 minutes. This is only our second time using the public transport in Europe. <laughs> that confidence is not well placed. Whoops. So it was the right train, just in the wrong direction. So we hopped off, hopped back on again, and 25 minutes we're now in the city. <laughs> Join us as we explore Spain's third largest city, aiming to cram in as many of the sights, sounds, and flavours as we can in just 12 hours. Welcome to Valencia. So I've created a bit of a walking tour for us today. That was our train station and we have just made it up to here. It's all quite easy to navigate and now we've made our way to Plaza de la Virgin which is a very historic and iconic square where we have found the famous fountain, basilica and cathedral. The plaza is the perfect spot for a coffee in the sunshine, but we've only just started, so onward to the next stop. So this is the ball ring behind me. It was built between 1850 and 1860. It has a 52 metre diameter and it is used for the July Fair and in Las Falas. A traditional Valencian celebration commemorating Saint Joseph. Serrano's Tower. It is the old gate into the city and we're going to see how much it is to climb up the top but Cal's put a two euro limit on it because it's a killjoy and it is as if you knew it was two euros so we're climbing it. We've climbed a number of towers on our European tour so far and this one's definitely one of the warmest especially in middle December. Wonderful Gothic um, architecture that we're getting used to in these uh, Spanish cities. It's quite nice up here, panoramic views of the city. And you can see all of the surrounding rooftops, which is quite nice. Now, first time in Flora and the Novice Explorer history, we're going to go and do a museum. We're going to go and check out the historic Silk Exchange. Which is where? Hopefully behind us. No, they exchange no. silk. We're hopefully going to do an audio tour and I've had a look and it's going to cost about 4 50 each but it's one of the things that we must do in Valencia because the town was founded from the money created through the Silk Exchange. Where? Silk exchange. Where they exchange silk. <laughs> so we have never seen these before. It might be because we've never done museums particularly, but uh, pretty snazzy. A little, uh, hello. Oh, hi, mum. Yeah, it's me. We're just doing a, uh, a tour around Valencia. We're just looking at the silk exchange. Can I call you back? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, he's managed to wipe his bum today. Yeah, so we're all right. Okay, bye. See you later. Audio tours, type in the number and listen. There was once parrots hanging in cages outside in those orange trees, did you know? I do now. I know a lot of things now that we didn't before. It's quite <laughs> worthwhile sometimes doing these because you get a lot more of a sense of what the place was actually used for and not just a um, a place of interest now for us tourists. And we're now at the most important modernist tourist destination in Valencia and one of the 12 treasures of Spain. So this is a state-of-the-art science complex built within a lovely landscaped park. It contains a huge aquarium and IMAX screens too. There's a very highly rated museum inside. However, there are parts of it that you can see for free and we're just gonna walk around. A lot of it's still open so you can uh, take in the sides and it's really quite strange. It's very, very futuristic looking. So 
So we're making our way through the Plaza del Ayuntamiento, probably butchered, I do apologise Valencians, through the city and up to the merchant market. I did try to not to get the one in plastic, but there was a little uh, issue with language again. But uh, here we go. So that was Valencia's largest indoor food market. And we've got a couple of tasty treats to finish off. I think it's a Nutella croissant, and I'm not quite sure what the other thing is, but uh, let's <laughs> rock with it. And now I'm going to try my treat. I'm not exactly sure, I have no idea what this is. It kind of looks like a folded Finder's crispy pancake to me, but I've got a suspicion it might be apple. I'm not sure. There you goes. What is it? <laughs> mm. Apple, maybe? Cinnamon? I don't know. Nice or not? No, <laughs> a bit stodgy. <laughs> So we are now in one of the oldest places where you can get horchata and fados. We've got one farto each and uh, a glass of horchata. It's supposed to be more refreshing than water, but we're having it in the winter, so it's not going to be quite as refreshing because we are quite cold at the moment because we're playing coke. It is made from tiger nuts and it's like a vegan milk, basically. Let's see what you think, Kalt. I don't think either of us have ever had this before. Very sweet initially, but it's quite creamy and smooth as well. It reminds me a little bit like coconut milk at first. It's got quite a tang, then it's sweet, and then it's quite thick. It's quite a strange <laughs> sensation as well. Uh, Dump your fart on the in. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> it feels wrong. We're going to go and find the nearest metro station, which we think is Cologne, hop on that and then head out to the beach for a bit of paella because this is the home and the original place where paella was created. Let's see if we can get on the train right first time. La Pepica dates back to 1898, as noted as a top restaurant to enjoy paella. So we had lunch at a place just behind us and uh, we didn't get to sit on the terrace because the terrace wasn't open but we weren't disappointed the paella was absolutely fantastic but we didn't film very much because it was quite a posh place and I don't think they've ever seen dreadlocks before. From here we strolled along the beach and back into the city. We've just been across the road at Creme Brulee Patisserie and got treats for later. Hopefully they make it home on the metro in one piece. We're heading to a bar around the corner now for our last little drinky poo-poos in Valencia for a classic Valencian drink. Aqua de Valencia. I think it's a cocktail and it could be quite strong, so uh, watch out. Both the patisserie and the bar were recommended by Monkey and Vinny. Unfortunately, the bar was shut, but we found an alternative. So that was our 12 hours in Valencia. By the time we got back to the van, it was dead on 12 hours that we left here this morning. So we are pooped. We have got our beautiful cakes that we're really excited to eat. I hope mine's better than yours, Callum. The cakes were Boston. We stayed at Valencia Camper Park whilst we explored. We always choose to stay outside the city where possible for security concerns. This was an ideal park up for us as it was a short walk to the metro station. We could also purchase the ticket from the campsite's reception, making life easy. Join us next time as we continue down the southeast coast of Spain, where we enjoy some of the best wild camp spots we've had so far. Thank you for watching. Give us a like if you have enjoyed this video and subscribe for future content. Comment down below if you've been to Valencia and click the bell button to receive notifications each time we upload. See you in the next one.